Good afternoon and welcome to the BRR Legal Brief, looking at the major legal issues affecting Australian business. I'm David Bushby and today we're talking about crowdfunding, which is a relatively new concept in Australia at least, which allows people to post projects online and raise funds for those projects via the internet. It's a model that has attracted the uh, um, attention of the Australian Securities and Investments Commission recently. Uh, and here to discuss what this might mean for those that operate crowdfunding platforms and the project promoters themselves is Daniel Goldberg, who's a lawyer, or a special counsel, I should say, at uh, Addison's Lawyers in Sydney. Welcome, Daniel. Thanks very much, David. Daniel, crowdfunding, just to, I guess, kick us off, how does it work and who's using it? Uh, David, as you said, crowdfunding is a relatively new and, and I think very exciting development in the use of the internet and social media in particular to raise funds for a whole variety of projects. Um, as you described, th the concept is fairly simple. Someone with a project that they need to fund puts a pitch for that project, a description of it, up on a website, a crowdfunding platform, mm -hmm. as they're known, um, and a fundraising target, how much they need to raise for to get the project off the ground. They then um, spread the word through their friends, family, social media uh, to people who might be wanting to support the project. Those people, the crowd, mm -hmm. come to the crowdfunding website and they can decide to pledge you know, as little or as much as they like towards that fundraising target. Um, it's already pretty big, particularly offshore, but, uh, but increasingly in Australia as well. Um, it's growing very rapidly. There are several hundred crowdfunding websites operating worldwide already and the number's growing all the time. Some of the big offshore ones you're probably familiar with are Kickstarter mm. in the US, uh, Crowdcube in the UK, and in Australia, a couple of examples are Possible and iPledge. Mm -hmm. These sites have been used to fund everything from a band looking to finance an upcoming tour or the release of a CD or a filmmaker trying to fund a new film mm. um, through to uh, inventors trying to get a new invention off the ground and, and needing funds to do that and increasingly the businesses looking for seed capital. Mm. Um, it's, some of the sums raised have been pretty staggering. I've seen reports that in 2011 alone um, one and a half billion dollars worth of funding was raised on these sites worldwide and some of the forecasts for 2012 are to almost double that. Mm. Um, generally speaking the people that contribute money, the crowd that contributes money to the projects receive some sort of incentive or reward for having contributed. Um, so in the example of a filmmaker making a new film, they, the, in exchange for your contribution, you might be promised a ticket to an advanced screening of the film. Uh, increasingly though, offshore, and this is what has attracted ASIC's attention, um, people are being offered actual equity stakes, securities, mm. in some of the businesses that are looking for funding through crowdfunding platforms. Well, just to take that point about ASIC, uh, they've, they've now looked at this. What is it exactly that they're concerned about with uh, that model? Well, it's a, it's a new area of commercial activity and a way to raise funds. And as I've said, the, the numbers are pretty big so it's, and growing. So it's, it's an increasingly significant issue. And the people that are being targeted for the money is everyone, you know, from the most sophisticated investors to the most unsophisticated, you know, people just using social media. Mm. Um, so um, ASIC sees this very much as within their consumer protection mandate. And mid-August they came out with a media release that gave some guidance on the way they are looking at crowdfunding and the fact that it's on their radar. Mm. The first point that they made in that was that crowdfunding as a discrete activity isn't regulated mm -hmm. and isn't, uh, you know, in any particular way, mm -hmm. isn't subject to ASIC supervision particularly, isn't part, you know, subject to the Corporations Act. Mm -hmm. um, what they, the point they did make though is where the projects that are seeking funding start to look like investments so that instead of just offering, to pe offering people a CD for contributing to my project, mm -hmm. I'm offering them shares in my company, mm -hmm. Um, then you start to get into financial services regulation territory and needing to think about things like disclosure and licensing um, managed investment schemes. Mm. The other point they make is that the general law around misleading and deceptive conduct um, and other consumer protection laws will, will also apply. 
So ASIC is really saying, yes, this is a great you know, new idea, but just be careful and be aware of what the law is. Um, they've copped a bit of shellacking for this, um, <laughs> and uh, they've been accused of being anti-innovation mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, trying to apply an old law to a, a new paradigm and, and, and you know, similar sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit unfair. Uh, ASIC has really looked offshore to what the experience has been mm. and has seen the writing on the wall. And, and that writing is that uh, increasingly this is being seen as a, a legitimate way to raise funds that would otherwise, in a, you know, a few years ago, have come from venture capital or would have come from a bank. Mm. So you're raising money for equity style investments. So although that's not yet happening in Australia mm. in any significant way, um, ASIC is warning that the law as it currently stands um, can become an issue for those sorts of projects. Mm. Well, I was just wondering if we could maybe get into an actual example of an investment style uh, project. I mean, can you, give it, can you step us through how one of those projects would, I guess, breach the uh, Corporations Act if it was raised without the appropriate licence or, or whatever? Well, look, any project that if it were being um, put forward outside the internet that would require a prospectus or a, or a PDS mm. or for which someone might need a license or to register a managed investment scheme. Mm. The fact that you're doing something on the internet doesn't take you out of that regime. Mm. <coughs> it might be a new and much more efficient way of doing it, but it doesn't mean that the, you know, the, the normal laws don't apply. Mm. So, um, by way of example, there have been a number of uh, businesses offshore in Europe and the UK in particular mm. that have sold down significant equity stakes in themselves mm. through crowdfunding platforms. So people are being offered mm. there an investment in a startup business effectively um, and they're making that investment with the hope and expectation that they will see an e economic return out of it. Now that's really no different from any other sort of fundraising that a company um, or, or a new business might might try to go through. Mm. The key question in each case really is what's being offered. Mm. Um, and it's where the thing that's being offered has the nature of an investment or financial product that ASIC is interested in it and that the financial services regime is going to start applying to it. Mm. So to give you a couple of contrasting examples, the, the classic example is a musician trying to fund a new CD, mm. right? They go to a crowdfunding platform, they say, I want to put this music out, um, I need X dollars to do it. Mm. Family and friends contribute through the funding site, they'd probably get promised a signed CD when the, when the thing's finished, and that's it. Now, that, obviously, that's a million miles away from financial services regulation, mm. and traditionally, and that's really where crowdfunding was born for that sort of project, very often art-type art projects mm. like that. Um, Contrast that though with a situation where I want to launch a music production company mm. and I might have tried to get some venture capital funding and, and you know, couldn't get enough or couldn't get what I needed or needed bank debt or whatever, couldn't get it. Mm. Um, I turn to crowdfunding and I tell people I've got this great new business that I'm going to be putting forward. I need so much money to do it and I'm offering people shares in my company um, to do it. Now, clearly, in that sort of situation, you would expect someone investing mm. in the business to be given the same sorts of protections that an investor investing in any IPO or, or securities fundraising mm. um, might, might expect. Well, I mean, let's just say that sort of thing does happen. I mean, these websites, you can go on there and you, you can post a project. And if you posted a project that gave exactly that, it gave you an investment or an equity stake into a project, uh, and if that... Uh, were to remain on the website and uh, therefore, I guess, be in breach of uh, licensing or disclosure laws, who would be liable? Would it be the actual owner of the crowdfunding platform or the project promoter themselves? Well, potentially both. You know, once you're in that territory, then in the example I gave, for example, someone trying to raise funding for a company, um, normally when you raise funding for a company, you've got to put out a prospectus or a PDS, depending on what it is. Um, as the project promoter, I have the liability for that if I, if I don't do that. The directors of the board have the liability for that. But similarly, the owner of the, the crowdfunding platform potentially has liability as well because there's a financial product, a share, being offered through their service and 
ordinarily you would require an AFSL, a licence yeah. to, uh, to do that. And what sort of penalties are we talking about here if, if they don't have it? Well look, they, um, th they can be very significant mm. um, if, you, if you do find yourself in that territory and, and ASIC again copped a little bit of a bashing for pointing this out, but I mean by way of example for illegally operating an unregistered managed investment scheme, the Corporations Act penalty is $20,000 or five years in prison or both. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. that's a maximum penalty, obviously, yeah. but it's once you're in that territory, the consequences are, are fairly dire. Absolutely. Well, I guess um, looking, or I don't know whether you've had a bit of a quick scan at the types of projects that are on offer at the moment. Um, do you think there are projects out there that could require a license or could require a, a product disclosure statement? I mean, how big an issue could this be right now? Well. As we sit here today in Australia, I, I think the regulatory aspect of this um, is, is relatively limited mm. because from what I've seen, the, what's being offered in Australia are more the, um, I guess, traditional crowdfunding type projects mm. which are not investment style mm. projects. Um, and even overseas at the moment, the vast majority of projects that are on these sites are not investment style mm. projects. So I think as we sit here today, particularly in Australia, it's not a big issue um, in the sense of people you know, being in breach at the moment. But as you know, with, with the internet and with social media in particular, things change rapidly. And we've really seen offshore an acceleration of these investment style units, mm. uh, uh, projects mm. being uh, looking for funding. Um, and inevitably, I think, because it's such an efficient and um, clever way of reaching people, mm. inevitably, I think it's something that uh, is going to come to Australia and people, regulators, promoters are going to need to, to grapple with. Well, I'm sure a lot of promoters out there have already thought of the idea and probably looking at uh, doing something similar. So I guess uh, just to wrap us up, what would be your main tips to come out of this for both crowdfunding website owners and uh, the people promoting projects on those sites? Well, look, as we sit here today, ASIC has put down a marker that says we're aware of this mm. and we're watching it and be careful. Um, as the law stands today, I think it would be dangerous for an Australian-based site to be um, putting up uh, investment-style projects to seek funding. Um, so what, what that means for promoters is that they really need to have strict policies in place about the kinds of projects that they will accept mm. and there need to be um, procedures for them to vet the projects and vet the people promoting the projects. Mm -hmm. Um, before they go live on the, on the sites. More importantly though, I think the industry here needs to take a, a more pro proactive approach to, to dealing with this uh, on law reform. Shooting the messenger, ASIC in this case, isn't really the answer. Mm. Um, in the US, in April this year, the US federal government passed an act called the JOBS Act, the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, yeah. I believe it stands for, uh, which has provisions specifically designed to permit crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding, mm. and has put some broad parameters around that. So, for example, companies can raise a million dollars per year from a very wide range of investors, but with some caps on what people can invest, can't invest. And it's, it's been left to the, um, to the SEC in the US to come up with the specific rules. Um, as to how that's going to be implemented. They're due later in the year, which, which I think is, you know, it's going to be very interesting to, uh, to see what they come out with. Um, I think industry here needs to be lobbying the government hard now because law reform in this space needs to come from a government level. Mm. Um, and for its part, I think the government should be looking at this because it's, it's a concept that has real momentum and it's not going away. Mm. Well, I'm sure what you said there is just uh, resulting in a lot of entrepreneurs out there painting their placards for that kind of reform. It does sound like a pretty amazing initiative in the US, which generally they, they make their way down under pretty soon. But uh, thank you again for your insights. Thanks very much, David. And viewers, thank you for tuning in. We look forward to having your company for next week's BRR Media Legal Brief.